So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a mid-century modern pattern inside Adobe Illustrator using just two shapes, which is a square and a circle. So this is actually really easy to do. And the cool thing is once you set up the template, you can then adjust and change this pattern on the fly, which makes it actually super fun to just go in here and play around with this and see what different patterns you can make. So with that in mind, let's get going. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have open inside Illustrator is the properties window, which is right here on my screen. If it's not open for you, just go to window and then properties about two thirds of the way down and make sure there's a checkbox, which means it'll be somewhere in your screen. If you don't see a checkbox, just click it and it should show up. And also if you want to have a color palette ready to go, sort of like what I have on my left hand side of the screen here, before you get started, you can either make that on your own or just Google mid-century modern pattern. And you should see a ton of different patterns that you can use to pull various colors from or use your own imagination and do whatever you think looks best. There's no real rules here. But if you want to do that work up front, feel free to do so. And then you can select the colors you actually want to use as we set up the initial stage of the pattern. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to start with a square. So in this case, we're going to want to go to the toolbar and on the left hand side of your screen, there should be a toolbar that has a rectangle tool and you can go ahead and just click that. Alternatively, you can hit M on your keyboard, which will also open up a rectangle. So feel free to do that however you want to. And then once you have the rectangle tool selected, just click once on your screen. And in this case for width, we're going to enter 105 and in height, we're going to enter 105 and this will make sense in terms of how we're doing this and why in just a little bit, but just 105, 105, hit okay. So that'll go ahead and enter this square on your screen. So next thing, same place in the toolbar, we wanna click and hold on that rectangle and then choose the ellipse tool in the menu that pops up. Alternatively, you can hit L on your keyboard, which should do the exact same thing. And just like we did before, click once on your screen, but this time do a width of 200 points and a height of 200 points. And that'll make sense in just a second. So hit okay. And also if you want to change the color of this to be a different color for your pattern, feel free to do so. When I had it selected previously, I just hit I on my keyboard for the eyedropper in order to just select a different color that was already on my screen. But you can also change the color using the fill in the toolbar if you haven't already done so. And also while we're checking out colors in the toolbar for both of these shapes, just make sure for the stroke that there's no stroke selected. And you'll know it's stroke in the front when you have what looks like a square with a square in the middle. And then below that, there's three different options. The far right one says none, where if you click it, it'll remove any stroke that's pre-existing. So it's helpful to do that before doing these next steps. So I just zoomed in a little bit on my screen to check out this circle. You can hit Control plus on your keyboard to do that on a PC or Command plus using a Mac. And then I'm going to select the white arrow or the direct selection tool in my toolbar. You can also hit A on your keyboard to bring that up. And what we're gonna do here is just highlight over essentially the right hand side of this circle. And once we do that, you're gonna hit the delete button or the backspace button on your keyboard, which will effectively delete half this circle. So once you do that, once again, highlight over the right side. And basically there's a point here and then a point here on the circle. You just wanna highlight so they're both selected. And then over one of those points, just right click on your mouse. Or I think if you don't have a right click button on your mouse, it will be option click to bring up the same menu. And then we're going to hit join from that menu, which is kind of in the middle. And basically that'll just connect these two different points so that there's now a line there. And then once you have these joined, we're actually going to need to add an additional point on this line, essentially right down the middle where this intersects. So as you see, when I highlight over various things, it'll have a hot pink text, at least on my screen, that'll say something like anchor or path. If you don't see that on your computer, you can hit control U. So control plus U on a PC or command plus U on a Mac, which will bring up smart guides, which is just super helpful. So if you don't see those, do that before this next step. And then I'm actually going to hit the plus sign on my keyboard, or alternatively, you can go to the toolbar, hold over the pen tool, and you wanna to change from pen tool to the add anchor point tool, which will allow us to add another point on this. And the reason why I had that smart guide is once I go to the middle point of this circle, you can see that it will say intersect with a line going to the center point of this half circle, I guess. So once you have that, and you can see the intersect line is there, you wanna click just once, 
which will now add a point on this line right down the middle. And I did that because now when we switch back to the white arrow, which once again, you can just hit A on your keyboard and highlight over the very top point, we can hit delete or backspace, which will now make this a quarter circle. So that point allowed this quarter circle to happen. If you didn't do that, it would have just been this arc, which wouldn't have been so useful. So once again, we're gonna highlight over the top two points, which are here and here. And then once again, hit right click and then join. And if you don't have a mouse that can right click, once again, I, I believe that's option on a Mac. But if I'm wrong, someone can correct me in the comments. So what I'm doing now is just using the black arrow or the direct selection tool. And you can hit V to select that in order to just bring up this quarter circle to this square that I made previously. And the reason why there's these cool borders around each shape is because the square is ever so slightly larger than the quarter circle that we made. And there's actually functionality built into the properties window inside Illustrator that makes it really easy to make sure these are perfectly aligned. So all you have to do is using that black arrow, highlight over both of the objects so they're both selected, the circle as well as the square. And then in the align section of the properties window, we're going to hit this one, which will say horizontal align center. It looks like a vertical line with two rectangles in it. So hit that and it will align this perfectly center. And then also there's one that's aligned vertical center, which will be a horizontal line with two rectangles going up and down. Hit that and it will align it perfectly. And I'll actually just make this a mess so you can see that in real time. So this will align it horizontally in the center and this will align it horizontally vertically. So since this is 105 as a width and height and this is 100 by 100, it leaves two and a half pixels on each one of these border lines. And when you add these together, there'll be a five pixel gap. So if you want a bigger gap, you can make this square larger and you can do that at any point in time in the very top here by just changing the overall size. So if I want this to be 110, you can go into the width in the top toolbar and then 110 in the height of the toolbar. Whoops, I did 100 instead of 110, which is why it looks wrong. But it should already be aligned center, so it should look good as you go ahead and adjust that. Just remember whatever that spacing is will double once you start actually bringing these together. But that was actually the hard part of doing this. From this point, it's all pretty easy. So what I'd like to do now is highlight over both shapes once again, and then hit Control G on a PC or Command G on a Mac, which will just group these together. So as you move it around, you don't have to worry about bumping any of these shapes away from each other. And then with this still selected, I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, or if you're using a Mac, I believe it's Option, and then just click, hold, and drag this off to the right while also holding Shift so it's perfectly horizontal. And you just wanna do that until you see your smart guides say intersect on your screen. And that means they're basically touching each other perfectly. And then once you do that, just let go of the mouse and you can let go of the keyboard. And it went ahead and made that move. And if you kept this still selected, and even if you unselected it, you can just reselect it. And then you can hit Control plus D on a PC or Command plus D on a Mac to go ahead and make that exact same movement right again. I'm just gonna do this to be a six by six square. So you can see that there's now six in a row. And if I zoom in here, there shouldn't be any gaps. So if you do zoom in and notice a gap, just do that first step over again when you align it and make sure that they're intersecting properly. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but now going up vertically to make that full template. So I highlighted over all these using that black arrow. Now I'm gonna click, hold and drag while holding Alt on my PC or Option on a Mac, and then hold Shift just so it's perfectly aligned on the vertical axis. And then once again, I'm just gonna make sure that these kind of snap together. And you will see, a, at least in my case, it's a pink text that says intersect, and they'll also probably want to stick together anyways. So now we have a six by two, and if I hit Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac, I can make this a full six by six template. So now we have an entire template here, which you can then use to create. So maybe you wanna select everything once again and then just hold Alt or Option and drag it off to the side so you have a, a baseline or your initial template that isn't messed up. But then you can just start clicking these shapes using that black arrow and then rotating them around by going to any one of the various rotation points. So while this is selected, there'll be one on each different side. And if you hover over it, your cursor will turn into two arrows that are kind of on a circle and you just click hold and rotate this around while holding shift, which will make these absolutely perfect in terms of 45 degree angles. And then just build this however you want. It's kind of fun to figure out different ways to make the pattern. And what I like to do is I try to keep the shapes sort of connecting and building a pattern in some way. 
but it's totally up to you how random you do or don't want this to be. Like obviously I could follow this exact same pattern all the way around and just kind of keep it consistent so that we have a very standardized looking pattern. Almost reminds me of like a tulip flower pattern for some reason. But you can play around as much as you want and sort of make whatever rules you do or don't want to make to make this as interesting as it needs to be for you to be happy with what you're doing. And of course, you can make this pattern way bigger if you want to. Like I know on the far left hand side here, I started with a much larger pattern where I was just playing around with different shapes and different ways of connecting those shapes. Or here's a different pattern that I made. So the possibilities are pretty endless. And of course, if you want to change the color of the pattern at any point in time, you can either click these and then right click and ungroup them, or you can use the white arrow and then click on whatever color it is you want to change. And once the color you want to change is selected, you can go to select and then same and then fill color, which will select that exact same fill color across your entire screen. So in this case, I have every single blue that I use there as that color, but it just to make this really obvious, I'll make it a hot pink and then hit okay. And it went ahead and changed that across absolutely everything on my screen. So that's of course one way that you could change it if you don't want to ungroup all these and manually go in and change them one by one. But of course you could do that as well. But that is really it for this tutorial. Like I said, this is super fun to do and that's why I made a tutorial on it as I found it actually kind of relaxing just to go in here and play around with various shapes and to see what different patterns make sense based on those shapes. Because there's no real rules. It's kind of like up to you. Whatever you think looks good for the particular pattern that you happen to be doing. Whoop, there we go. So that is it for this tutorial. If you found this helpful, feel free to hit the thumbs up button to let me know that you found it helpful. And also if you wanna see stuff like this more often, consider subscribing because I do my best to keep creating new content just like this for programs like Illustrator. And of course, if you have questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section. Maybe I can help you, someone else can help you or whatever it is you are looking to say, feel free to do it there. But past that, thank you so much for watching.